Hey YouTube, it's Gettyman here, and welcome to the Ultimate Guide to Q's Winter Wonderland. In this guide, we'll go over all the festivities, from accolades, strategies, and more, to get the most out of this awesome event. When you first spawn into the Ice Gazebo, you'll be given a quick mission to unlock the event item store. Q will provide you with one ornament to donate to the event reputation project. Donate it and you're on your way. What can we do with all this time but participate in Q's games or his own twisted enjoyment? Our first event should be no surprise to any Winter Event veteran, the fastest game on ice. In this event, you will earn the main currency, or should I say only currency, for buying the new fancy T6 ship on offer. For those of you wanting to see a review of the current ship on offer, I'll be posting that each year as a separate video. After talking to the Breen just behind Q, run down to the other Breen to start the race. A quick note of caution, don't start the race if someone else is there waiting, unless you are 100% sure they're AFK. If you both happen to start the race at the same time, you will fail it, and have to restart. Now the race itself is quite straightforward. You must slide across the ice faster than your random opponent. So let's talk strategy. There are a few techniques you can use. The first of these is the mad dash. Basically do a mad dash to the finish using your W, A, S, and D keys or mouse, which is what I prefer. Simply take each corner early and at a steep angle. The other strategy, which is hit or miss, is the jumping roll. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Jump down the track and roll through the corners. I see the strategy used a lot in the Fast and Flurious race. Another thing to note is there's a jut in the ice. If you hit this, then you can instantly turn and not have to worry about sliding across the ice. Once you complete the race, head to your reputation tab and donate your vouchers. You need 1,000 of these for that new ship. It can be done in 25 days of racing. Speaking of the Fast and Flurious race, by the way, let's talk about it. Another race that's a lot like the first, only throw in some obstacles, a drop, and an annoying flag system, and you have yourself an annoying event for sure. The reward for this one is the Epotags. I'll explain those a bit later. To be completely honest with you, only play this event if you collect pets or need marks. Strategies. I have a few. When you start the race, always start here. This spot gives you a clear shot to the front. At the drop, jump the second you land. This prevents you from slowing too much. Then, do your best to avoid the other obstacles and sprint for the flag. Oh yeah, the flag. You'll need to jump at the flag. Jumping will stop you from sliding. That way you can just grab the flag and not have to worry about other people stealing it from you. You can get 12 tags for first place, 6 for second, 3 for third, and 2 for finishing the race at all. Now let's start talking about missions that award commodities. Pie eating is one of these. Talk to the Breen over in the Gingerbread Village to start. The strategy for this one is simple. Eat the smallest pies to get the most done in the time allotted. This mission gives very little reward, but hey, it's there if you need it. The next event is one of my least favorites. The Tide of Ice event is basically a tower defense mission. You defend a tower against ever-increasing waves of snowmen. Or should I say Snowborg? Wait, no, I got it. Snorg. There are nine normal waves, and a final wave that has you fighting a Snorg Queen. The problem with this event is the time spent to reward ratio. Sure, it gives you a few things here and there, but if you have a lot of players, you're not going to be getting a lot of kills, and that's a problem. And if you don't have enough players, say you're the only person there, then the rewards are severely reduced. So I tend to stay away from this one. Next we have another flop in my opinion. Cones of Conduct. Now I will say, watching a giant snow cone with Iconian eyes fighting snowmen is awesome. But that's where the good ends and the bad begin. There are two phases to this event. Phase 1 has you fight little groups of three snowmen to collect ice and shooting candy with a phaser for syrup. Sounds easy, right? Well, it would be if the snowmen had less range and didn't respawn mere seconds after you kill them. Now, depending on how much syrup and ice you gather, you will spawn a weaker or stronger snowconian. From here, you can keep filling up the pools. But this is phase 2. Both phases are similar. However, Phase 2 has a lot more snowmen. If the Snowverlord freezes all the buildings, you're out of luck. Sorry. Again, this event is a lot of time for a little gain. Alright, what's next? Playing on ice fishing? Ah, uh, I'm on the fence about this one. To get started, head to the frozen lake and talk to the Klingon at the base of the tower. He'll ask you to get a fishing gauntlet from the crates next to him and smash some ice for a fish to put at the altar. The ice you can fish in is marked by a slightly discolored circle. Once you throw the fish into the altar, you're done with the tutorial. For the actual event, you must bring as many fish as you can to the altar. 
Once enough fish are sacrificed, you will spawn a Kaskari serpent. Then you've got to kill it. There are many types of fish, small, medium, large, but the two that are special are the huge fish, which you need to punch and slam onto the ice as it eats your arm, and the monstrous fish, which tries to eat your entire body. The best strategy for this one's to use frosted boots and jump onto the circle rather than slide into it. Oh, and watch out for the serpent's knockback. The new event this year, which I'm recording this is 2017 by the way, is the Krampiri. He's a giant bullet sponge. That's literally it. When you kill him, he runs away and he'll drop presents occasionally as you fight him. Which, by the way, here's the thing. Occasionally, some of them will drop a nice commodity, like earmuffs or maybe a candle or two. But generally, the presents just drop ornament fragments, which is complete bullshit. You can choose to play this event solo or with other players, but note that if you play with other players, they might not give you a chance to get the present. So if you want that mine, mine, mine achievement, you may want to consider playing solo. This event is probably the least rewarding of all and quite disappointing. Now to the good stuff, snowball fight. This mission has you kill 100 snowmen and then fight an overlord on the lake. It's an excellent source of rewards, and if done fast enough, you can switch instances and do it up to two more times for a total of three runs. People will shout out and zone how many are left in each instance, Use it to your advantage. As for strategy, go to the east of the map shown here and use the avalanche ornament. And by the way, it's an ornament. And there is a gun by the same name, but make sure it's the ornament. It's basically orbital strike, but it's a giant snowball. So use that in combination with Hale's secondary fire to take out a ten at once. The final event and the most rewarding comes in the form of a PVEQ. Winter invasion is the best. It really is. Fight through 10 groups of snowmen, saving gingerbread people along the way. Then fight a yeti, and finally a snow baron. Really, it's it's great. And on top of that, you can find a present each time, which gives you a recipe to give Neelix, which gives you commodities, plus killing yeti gives you commodities, the baron gives you commodities, and the present you get at the end, the mysterious box of cookies and treats, that gives you commodities too. It's a Q Christmas miracle. I have to wonder why people don't do it more. But anyways, strategy. The only advice I have for this one is character hop to do it over and over again. Oh, and do all the optionals. Here's a list of where all the recipes spawn. I have each one marked with a dot. Alright, so I mentioned the recipes. So there's one side mission in the Gingerbread Village. Talk to Neelix to go out searching for your food of choice. Most, if not all, ingredients to spawn on the map. Others will require you to replicate an ingredient or buy it from a vendor or the exchange. With all the events taken care of, let's move on to the accolade. There are a total of 15 to be obtained. We'll start off simple. You may have noticed all the snowmen scattered around the event map. Well, some of them can be interacted with, and by some I mean seven. Here are their locations, again marked by a dot. The accolade also unlocks the title Frosty. Snowball Hero can be obtained by completing 20 snowball fights. The best way to do this is by instance hopping. This accolade also unlocks a title of the same name. Fast and Flurious is unlocked by finishing 20 competitive races, or by placing first just once. Ice Racer is unlocked by completing the fastest game on ice 10 times, but you'll be completing it 25 times, so it's not anything to worry about. A line in the snow will unlock once you finish Tide of Ice 10 times, and Mine 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 is unlocked for opening 33 of the red, green, and blue presents the Cramperia drops. Note that it's 33 of each color, not just 33 altogether. Snowshoe can be obtained by raising any of the original three rare Epo variants. Snow Epo with bow, Papo Mint with bow, or Candy Stripe with earmuffs. This accolade also unlocks the title of the same name. Holiday Chef is unlocked by making every holiday food item with Neelix. There are a total of 16 recipes to make. The rest of the accolades are tied to the Winter Invasion queue. Nibbler, Broad Enough for Everybody, and Sweet Tooth are unlocked by eating 10, 25, and 50 candies respectively. Here is a map of all the candy locations, but be quick because other captains want candy too. The final accolade in this tree also rewards the title Sweet Tooth. Ginger Helper, Ginger Friend, and Ginger Buddy are the same as the candy, being awarded at 10, 25, and 50 gingerbread colonists helped, with the final awarding the title Ginger Bro. Here are their locations. And once again, you have to be quick to get them. The final accolade can be obtained by defeating the Yeti in the cave. Yeah, it's really that simple. A few final things. The Epos can be turned in for certain marked denominations and multiple choice packs. The unit can be found near the Epo Lady and rewards 100 of any type of mark for the normal Elder Epos and 200 for their rare counterparts. Another thing to keep an eye on are the Doff missions. 
that reward commodities, XP, and the lithium. They appear on the Winter Wonderland map itself, the Starfleet and Klingon Academies, and ESD and Kronos. They're worth doing every 4 hours and take barely any time to start. Now before I leave you to grind out these ornaments, I should give you a strategy first. If you have 3 characters, buy Hail from the Event Store on all 3, and keep going from one to the other doing the Winter Invasion. If you have more characters, do it again for each one, making sure you select it off missions as you go. If you don't have more than one character, or simply don't want to keep switching, do the Winter Invasion every 30 minutes, keeping up with your DOF missions. Do the events you enjoy, but stick to the ones that reward the most. Also do the pie contest every 15 minutes, or as often as possible, as well as turning in your recipe to Neelix for his bonus as well. I also recommend making a Winter Triple, using the Winter Food and a Common Triple. I'll be going over rewards in depth in a separate video. However, if you're going to stay here a while, I would get Hail, Flurry, the Avalanche Ornament, again, it's the ornament, not the gun. The Advanced Klingon Fishing Gauntlet, Q's Gingerbread Defense Squad, and the Shaved Ice Gateway. Well, that's about it for Q and his Winter Wonderland. Stay tuned for the in-depth rewards video, the ship review, and more. Also, I want to give a huge thanks to Danny Destiny. This video wouldn't have been possible without him. His channel link will be in the description. And with that, this is Gutty Man signing off. Have a good one. Hey guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any advice, questions, compliments, or complaints, please put them in the comments below. And as always, take care out there.